Uh, you may have heard that the low-cost airline EasyJet says it's going carbon neutral. Other carriers, well, they have schemes to compensate for carbon emissions. But can the airline industry really go green? Welcome to Roundtable. Hello from me, David Foster. Taking a flight, particularly long haul, is one of the single most polluting acts that most of us can do. The industry, well, it appears to have caught on to the concern over carbon emissions, but is that to save the world or to carry on making money? Flying has become so cheap, all you need is to choose a destination. Low-cost flights have led to an increase in passenger numbers. Worldwide, they've quadrupled in 30 years, and by 2037, they're expected to double to 8 billion a year. EasyJet is set to become the world's first major airline to operate net zero carbon flights across its entire network through carbon offsetting. Offsetting is when companies invest in environmental projects with the aim to balance out their own carbon footprint. But some are skeptical. Climate researcher Kevin Anderson says the concept of carbon offsetting is without scientific legitimacy and dangerously misleading. Can the aviation industry clean up its act to help save the planet, or is it promising more than it really wants to deliver? And I'm very pleased to say that joining me at the round table, we have Kazi Shafikur Rahman, founder and chief exec of the startup airline Fearness Airways. Jenny Bates with us too, climate campaigner for Friends of the Earth. And from South Africa, we welcome Kaitano Dube, ecotourism management lecturer at Val University of Technology and from Spain, Jeff Saltman joins us, founder of Air Race E, which works with electronically powered aircraft. And Jeff, I'll come to you first of all, because you are working with this technology or will be when Air Race E literally gets off the ground on a, on a daily basis. And I read that these aeroplanes are going to go, what, 450 k's an hour, but they can only fly for about five minutes flat out like this, and the battery that powers them weighs 100 kilograms. It's just not viable on bigger aircraft for longer distances, is it? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, the, the Really, the biggest inhibitor uh, from the advancement of electric propulsion in aerospace is the weight of the battery. Clearly, there's a lot of other issues as well uh, to tackle, um, but the weight is, is far more impacting in, in aerospace and aviation uh, than it is in other modes of transportation. Um, so really people are expecting and forecasting, it could be 20, 30, many people say 40 years before an airline, a passenger airline is going to carry, say, 200 people a meaningful distance. It's a long ways away. However, you've got to start with the technology we have today, and that's what we're doing now, and the industry is very, very keen on starting small to be able to build up to that level. And, and there is a, a commercial aircraft that's used mostly for teaching, I think, a papalinas or something like that that can fly for about an hour, but again, it can only take two passengers. So how is that going to change? Well, that's correct. There's a few planes that are just coming out into the market, production models that are uh, just entering the market. And really, like you said, they're two-seaters, they're training airplanes, really used for training pilots. Um, there's what's called VTOLs, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, which are going to be hitting the market probably within a few years. Uh, and those will carry passengers a, a very short distance. So there's going to be market applications, uh, if not, well, really immediately, but also very, very soon. And those are going to uh, serve a very, very big purpose uh, and an important purpose. But uh, not only in the utility that each plane will provide, but actually in their ability to be a platform for technology development, which will get us to that future uh, much more efficient mass market uh, stage. And, of I'm, course, I'm that's... Sorry, 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 Jeff, we will go into other forms of uh, uh, non-polluting transport a little bit later or less polluting transport other than batteries, but that's really where we must start. And Jenny, I'll come to you first of all. I remember, as a younger reporter, mobile phone, portable, just about, if you were strong enough, with a battery that size. Now look how far we, we've come. Mm. It may be a few years off, but it's, it's not beyond the realms of possibility, is it? No, and absolutely right that we're looking at and industry is looking at how to make um, what flying 
can be done um, completely green. But as, as you've just heard, it's a long way off. And, the, you know, the world is committed to, to, to reaching net zero climate emissions by 2050. That's much sooner than this technology will be available. That's why we've got to act now to curb flying, control it, share it out more evenly um, and, and, and make sure we... OK, you so, know, so you it, say the answer will come, probably... But in the meantime, something needs to be done to cap back on the amount of pollution that's being put out there. By sharing what out equally? By sharing what flying can be done um, more evenly and more well, fairly. So we're, we're rationed, are we? Well, we, what we're suggesting for the UK uh, has got a lot of, lot of support is something called a frequent flyer levy. Because in the UK, 15%, only 15% of the passengers take 70% of the flights. So a, a very small minority is taking the majority of the flights. So, you know, if, if it was shared out more evenly, then, then you know, the people in the UK could, could still take a regular, um, you know, flight holiday, flight abroad short haul. So it's, that is the problem. And, and we're not taxed. But nobody's taking aviation. that idea any further, are they? Yes, no, it is. Well, the, where, where's it got to with, gov with lawmakers and so well, on? Well, the government's advisers, the Committee on Climate Change, they're, 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 you know, they're, they've been looking at it, represented in, their, in their, their document, their advice to government. We're waiting for further steps. But, yes, it's, it's, it's a clear thing that needs to happen. And also gen generally taxing. In the UK, we're not taxing aviation fuel. OK, so the thing is, uh, Kasi, the... Airline prices have come down rapidly over the last 40, 40 years. Whether you can always get the right ticket or not at the right prices is another matter. But, but Jenny and the others, to go green, wants to effectively put the prices up, because that's what would be needed in terms of taxes and research and development, and limit the number of passengers that you could take on your plane on a regular basis. Well, look, <clears throat> flying will um, increase... It's part of our human nature. You know, we've always travelled, we've always connected. Goods need, need to go from one place to another place, and the world is becoming more and more competitive day by day. So I don't think flying will decrease. However, when it comes to pricing, um, I don't think it needs to be, you know, as I say sometimes, cheap as chips. You know, flying can be, you know, perhaps... I wouldn't say taxing is the way, but um, I think... What would you do? There has to be more conversations between um, operators in terms of how they're competing against... So the only other way, if you want more money, besides taxing, is for you to put your prices up? Well, look, if, if that's um, what it takes, then I think that conversation needs to be had. Sounds because, impractical, you know, though, doesn't it? I mean, I'm going to go to Caetano first, because I want to get everybody mm -hmm. involved. Sounds impractical that you, as a businessman, are going to put your prices up to save the world while your competitors are saying, hang on, we'll, we'll undercut him by uh, a couple of hundred quid and <laughs> you'll stay in business. Caetano, what do you reckon? Do, do airlines take this seriously? I said in my introduction, is this to save the planet or, or to save their businesses, that they're actually sort of becoming... Well, they're virtue signalling, as some might say. Well, thank you for that. I, I think uh, one thing that is central to this discussion is to keep in mind that the aviation industry is quite vulnerable to climate extremes. Uh, so definitely the aviation industry does have um, stand to lose if, if uh, in terms of climate change. So what we are seeing is that there has been some progress, I think, that is being done in terms of trying to go green by aviation industry as a whole. Uh, so not particularly looking only at the airline industry, but all the stakeholders that are involved in the aviation industry, uh, particularly under the ICAO. Uh, we have seen, I think, a lot of desire to go green. Obviously, you have got some players that are really interested in going green, but there are really some players that are in this tendency of greenwashing so that uh, they make quick profit. So in essence, so you, you have got a mixed uh, outcomes in terms of how the industry is responding to climate change. OK, and, and anybody can say anything they want at any one time, but I'm going to let Jenny have the next word because you, you did want to say something before we went to Kaitane. Well, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, we, we just have to fit um, all of our various sectors of, of, of our economy into what we can um, emit for climate change. There's no question and there's no reason why aviation should be left as a, as a, as a massive sort of um, uh, remaining emission sector when others 
are all having to cut do massively. Think, do, do you think yeah. they are working uh, on it? Seriously? Yeah, no, the airlines are, um, of course. But at the moment, in the UK, under the, the government's advisors' scenarios, aviation would be the single biggest remaining sector. And that's, you know, that seems mad because so much, so much um, of flight is sort of not strictly necessary, it's, it's sort of desirable or whatever, but it's not necessary, whereas we've got things well, like So homes. we should limit ourselves to pastimes that are not necessary. Well, I didn't... That I are didn't, necessary. <laughs> I, did, I did make it, but no, the I pastimes mean, that are necessary, I can't really like, think of that many. We've got homes, you know, we've got to heat our homes. We've, you know, there's going to be some gas heating in homes for a while. So the whole idea of being able to offset emissions, um, you know, actually there's very few offsets that really would work. There's, there was a big UN report that showed, mm. you know, that showed um, that, that very few of them actually work. So, so they need to be reserved for see, the what, things what I'm we asking, can't. What so. I'm asking is, do you mm. think the airlines, do you think the industry is serious in looking at changing its its way of operating ar around um, and equally are you serious in what you say if you if you expect people to do all of these things let's start with the industry one first are, th are they taking their responsibility seriously enough no I don't think so. I, I think sorry yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think we'll I come think back the to Jenny. aviation industry I think the aviation industry is quite serious uh, in terms of organization, I think it is the only uh, sector that have come up with a strategy on how to tackle <coughs> climate change. Um, but, but then I think it's unfair for us to sort of like pinpoint the aviation industry. If you look at the maritime industry, it's, it's much, much more uh, carbon emissions that are being polluted. And in terms of regulation, there is very little that is being done. I do believe that the aviation industry can do a bit more uh, in terms of trying to cut down on carbon emissions. But if you look at the research that is being done, what I think is that the technology and uh, what is being done is slower than actually the growth rate of the aviation industry. So it would seemingly uh, look like yeah. uh, there the, 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 the isn't seriousness on the aviation okay, industry. Okay, so, so, so I, get, I get it. What's happening is the problem is growing exponentially. Uh, the solutions are Not coming on much, up. much yeah. more slowly. It's my yes. fault for saying interrupt whenever you want to everybody, <laughs> Jenny. But I'm, I'm going to go to, to um, Barcelona again, to Jeff over there, because I know there's something... A couple of times you've been nodding your head. Yeah, uh, either wanting to get balanced. in desperately or sort of saying you disagree with what's been said. Uh, both. A combination of agreeing and, and, and maybe uh, cl clarifying. Um, so I, I absolutely agree. In fact, generally, with, with everything that's been said, um, I do think aviation and the aerospace industry, both on the manufacturing side and the passenger travel side, are taking this very, very seriously. I can genuinely say it is the hottest topic, most important issue pressing the industry. I mean, they're acutely aware of the ramifications of what, you know, of being the bad guy, you know, especially going over the next 20, 30 years, the forecast to be the worst contributor. And they're, they're very aware of this. And it, there, there are a lot of, a lot of problems. Um, uh, you know, uh, as Katana said, it's, it's the technology is much, much harder in aerospace to make it work. So it's, you know, we're really held back, constrained by the batteries and certain other things. And of course, regulations in aerospace make it much more yeah. challenging. But even on the uh, even on the uh, like, for instance, you know, Jenny's, uh, you know, point about basically moderation or control. That, that's a good, sound strategy in just about any form of consumption, you know, is, is moderation, only use what you need to do. Yeah, but it's the like asking is, everybody else to take their car off the road and keeping, keeping yours there. It just isn't going to happen, well, there's Jenny, that is too. it? Yeah. Well, if you but share if it out, I mean, that's the, as I explained, the UK is, is very un, unfair sort of distribution of who flies and who doesn't. I mean, nearly half of uh, people in the UK don't, didn't take a single flight at all in a, year, in a year. But the key thing is that, you know, if you've got an industry that's got an issue, and, and quite rightly, climate change has finally got right up the agenda, and it's no doubt they, the, the, mm. the aviation industry has realised that, and, and they're trying to do things. Some of it's greenwashing. I'm sure they're also trying to, to, to actually do things, but, but it, you know, we're not there, as we've said, and we have to act in the meantime. Well, There's video conferencing, we could do more. No, those, no, I, don't, I yeah, know all of this. We're talking right, about the solutions. Okay, I understand that. Those industries could, could diversify. But let's ask, I mean, let's like ask an airline boss. Just like fossil fuel um, industries, you know, they should be getting into renewables and not just thinking is, about is selling gas. Jeff right in saying that the sector is taking this seriously. Well, what I are you doing about it? I think um, aviation industry is taking it very seriously, and I think um, okay, before... Okay, but what are you doing? So, in terms of, At obviously... At the moment, if you take off, it's kerosene, right? Yes. 
Yes, I mean, look, um, as, um, as our panelists have been saying, you know, it's, it's a slow change. You know, we can't not say, okay, we're not going to do anything about it. Yes, we can't achieve, you know, future right now, but, you know, we can work towards, we can take small steps towards the future, towards electric But what Jenny's saying is that those flying. small steps are not enough because the aviation industry is taking giant bounds towards <laughs> In that case, I think Jenny's got a bigger job to do in terms of, um, I think, um, increasing the PR in terms of um, educating the flyers, the travellers. Well, no, let, let, let me ask you specifically, Kazi, we, we've met before, talked about your business, you've been on Roundtable before. What are you doing to go green? Well, right now, I mean, look, um, in terms of utilisation of fleet, you know, utilising um, more, more modern, more efficient fleet, that's something that we can do. Um, not using older aeroplanes. Um, and that's something that we have already kind of um, executed within our plans, you know, to move away from older aircraft to more newer aircraft. And obviously, the f we're okay, so very much more, excited. They are more fuel efficient, yeah. but you're hoping to add more of them to but your fleet, the future, thereby the future, increasing the total amount of carbon. Say, what I was going to say is future is electric. You know, you've got um, companies in the US. Uh, there's a company called Zunum Aero. Um, I know the founder quite well, and they're backed by JetBlue and Boeing, and they are looking to develop a fully electric plane that can carry up to 19 passengers. So th these are all exciting movements. And yes, I've being... seen drawings of it. Sorry? I've seen drawings of, yes. of, of, that, of that very plane. OK, um, Jenny, then we'll come to you two um, in our distant locations. What do you make of... Let's pick one example. British Airways and Shell <clears throat> getting together to make fuel, which would involve some kerosene, mm. Yeah, being mixed with fuel that is made from uh, landfill sites. And, and, and what they would do is, they, instead of the landfill site producing gas there, it would, it would actually be converted into energy as part of the fuel, thereby um, helping with, you know, less pollution underground. I mean, is that just cosmetic? Well, I, I think, you know, anything that sort of, you know, is actually sort of workable and, and overall doesn't cause a problem um, is, is, is probably a good thing. Um, but, Do you know, you know about it this specific like scheme? I've, I've vaguely heard, but I don't it's know It's a bit details. like using old chip shop oil yeah. to, to fire up your, your VW yeah. tram. I mean, it, you know, what, what are problems if, if, if land is taken for biofuels, you know, to, to, yeah. to use as fuel? That's not good. But if it's, if it's um, you know, we know that there are, you know, there are some gases that can be used for, for transport, you know, for anaerobic digestion, whatever, straight for transport. So if, if, you know, if that's a plan for aviation, that sounds like, you know, a small step, but it's slightly it's still not just batteries, tinkering. it's not just electric. Or, yeah, or is so, what I'm talking I mean, about here tinkering? Yeah, well, I, exactly. I think it is, you know, tinkering at the moment. I mean, as I said, ultimately, we yeah. should get there. But it's what we do now that matters. And, and um, you know, people, uh, industry should see where the wind's coming from invest in, in that technology, but in the meantime, you know, think about investing in a rail a rail operator or a video See, conferencing. It, 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 it all depends where you come from as well, doesn't it, yeah. Caetano? And, Je and Jeff, you can come in on this one as well about the alternative fuels. Let's take some poorer African countries where, where the fleets aren't necessarily as much up to date as, as they might be um, in a modernised Europe. Um, the pressure is going to be on and the ability to be able to change with those... Um, older fleets is going to be more difficult uh, when you don't have so much money uh, at your disposal. Yes, uh, most definitely. I've been looking at the figures for last year um, uh, that, that, that actually shows the carbon emissions. You would realise that the aviation industry contributes about, what, 2.4% uh, of the total carbon emissions. And if you look at Africa, uh, we, we really do very, have very few airlines. But the few airlines that we have, I think most of them have been realizing the benefits of going green. And uh, if you look at Ethiopia, they've got uh, a relatively young fleet because they want also to respond to this issue of uh, sustainability. Look at Kenyan Airways. Um, obviously, the issue of old aeroplanes is going to be a big problem, especially in Africa, where we see a lot of uh, these budget airlines that are coming into effect. Because what we are seeing is that those airlines are actually buying the old fleet from the West and then bringing them down to Africa, which is a problem, uh, really, in terms of carbon emissions. And, 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 and carbon em Sorry to jump in. We are short of time. And another of your um, uh, handles at the moment is as an ecotourism lecturer. The number of tourists flying is actually 
doing the exact opposite of preserving the ecology. It, it, tourism is, is yes. encouraging the problem. Yes, so we, the, the, the aviation industry really is uh, responding to the demand by tourists to, to travel. So we have got a lot, of, a lot of number of people that are traveling all at the same time. And, and we project that the aviation industry is going to grow by about 1.9% annually, which is quite great, So we, which is quite a, a huge increase. So really, I think there is a need for us to increase the effort that we are doing in terms of going green uh, through retrofitting. Uh, I, I think uh, it's, it's one thing that can be done, especially to old aeroplanes, to try and ensure that whatever the amount of carbon emission that is being polluted is reduced. I know there's also an issue that has been spoken and touched on about uh, the carbon market. That's, that's one area I think that can be promoted is particularly in Africa where there is um, uh, potential for people to actually offset their carbon uh, project. Although can, can I just throw a couple of figures in there? In the past 30 years, the number of flights, passengers, whichever happens to be your best way of measuring it, has increased fourfold. And that could well double, it is thought, by 2037. Um, that is an extraordinary uh, statistic. Jeff, is it not? Are batteries the only way of changing this, or do you think there's another way of, of getting us around the world as much as we want without damaging that very same planet? You know, it is really, really hard. Uh, I mean, uh, there, there are actually a lot of alternate, uh, alternative uh, power sources uh, and a lot of methods that can be used, and clearly technology is going to take us even beyond electric in the future, uh, no doubt about it. Um, there's a lot of challenges. I mean, even just coming back to the, to the last point, uh, we talked about old airplanes. What happens when aircraft do become electric? There's going to be a huge amount of pressure on all fossil fuel burning airplanes to just go by the wayside. So all the other airlines that have been building up, even with newer planes, uh, may feel a lot of pressure on themselves to switch to electric, and then that would be hugely costly for them. Well, there was and a guy called uh, Professor David Lee, Manchester University, reckoned to be one of the experts in, in, in this field, who says it is happening too slowly, and the industry needs the government to say we have to have zero carbon emitting fuel as soon as possible. So perhaps it'll come down to laws. I think that's true. I think the law will always pe focus people. I mean, clearly, that, that has to be done. Uh, I think also, unfortunately, uh, the, it's, it, aviation is a volume business, so you, it needs growth and it needs increased amount of passengers to be able to have the resource to be able to adapt in the first place. So any decrease uh, is a hindrance yeah. to it. So it, it's a catch-22, really. Um, so I think laws help. You know, that, that disciplines the industry. Um, you know, we like to think that what we're doing in electric airplane racing helps because it's creating a platform of technology investment and R&D and a real-world But world this mission. is the point you're making, isn't it? Because you are actually ahead of the curve. You, you were racing normal planes before. Now you see that e-planes are the way, uh, uh, the way of the future. So you're trying to lead it. Jen, Jenny, is that the sort of thing that you exactly. need to see? Well, as I say, I think that will help. Obviously, you know, that is the way if, you know, what flying can and needs to be done should be done with zero emissions. You know, technology neutral, there may be other, other will solutions. Will it happen in your or my and lifetime? It sounds like it, but maybe not mine. <laughs> but, uh, um, but, you know, the, the, the key is that, that we, we, we just can't carry on uh, you know, industry can't just carry on as it is at the moment. We know we we have to act now. We've got international law on climate, and that's why every country has to work to that. And therefore, you know, they, it has to be worked out. What what you know, very decreasing. Per head in this country, the UK, we fly more than any other uh, nation on earth. But most flights are taken in one of the countries where the president of that country is saying. Uh, those laws matter diddly squat to me. That is the USA. Well, <laughs> the USA has a problem. Not all of the USA, and not all um, you know states of the USA consider the the, the situation in the same way. But okay. yeah, Let, let's go to the airline boss here. Uh, everybody has been saying you've got to go green, and if you don't go green, you will go out of business. And yet. Chicken and the egg here is that you have to have the money to invest in the newer planes to be able to get rid of your old fleet. But you can't do that without making money in the first place and ruining the world. Absolutely. I mean, um, and this, this is where it comes to really stiff competition. You know, even in Europe, you know, everyone's trying to compete 
even the long haul guys, the legacy operators, where they used to have a different model, full service model. Now they're trying to kind of um, copy the low cost operators and low cost is all about kind of being as cheap as possible. And, and I've always had that problem of, you know, kind of um, understanding why, why does it have to be so cheap? You know, we can have a different kind of approach to this. How, having said that, um, coming back to the whole regulatory aspect, I think aviation is is so much regulated. Over regulated. Do we over, over regulated? Okay, Do we so need more regulations on, on that one? Except I doubt from Jenny. Um, listen, thank you very very much indeed. It, it is weird, isn't it? I mean, there you are trying to set up an airline to, to get it off the ground, quite literally. And at the same time, you've got to think about what you might be doing in in, in thirty Absolutely. years' time. Otherwise, your gator can be completely well out of business. Yep. Do you think you'd be happy flying in the first electric plane you came across, or do we need to sort of do an awful lot of? I would on love that? to. I would love to kind of be be on that flight. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so there's a challenge to you, Jeff, and the e-racers. You have a willing participant who's the head of an airline who wants to go green. It's a win-win situation, isn't it? Listen, thank you, thank you very much, indeed, Catano, Jeff. Thank you very much to Friends of the Earth, to Jenny for coming in. And thank you very much. Good to see you thank again. Thank you for having us. Cool. From me, David Foster. Well, that's it. We must fly. Um, round table over for another day. We hope to have your company next time. Goodbye for now.